friends, this is Sheila Keeter. I am your teacher for inclusion, and that means that I have a blog post called Teacher for Inclusion, as well as a Teachers Pay Teacher shop, also called Teacher for Inclusion. If you're interested in videos about Teachers Pay Teachers and all things Teachers Pay Teachers, then don't forget to hit subscribe. Today, I'm going to show you some cool tips and tricks for using Canva. So let's go ahead and jump right in. First, I'm going to start with letting you know that I teach secondary resources. So um, it's a little trickier for me to create covers because I can't just use clip art. It's too, um, it's for a younger age. So today I'm going to show you how to, use, to, to create a cover using the photo collage. And here's one. So basically what I do is I take a novel, I read it, I create resources for the entire month, and then, um, and then I post covers um, to fit the resource. The second thing I wanna show you are just some tips and tricks to use with Canva. You can use them with your covers, um, but I'm gonna do them in a way that looks like let's say if you were teaching a lesson online. So you could use it for that. Um, you can also use it for YouTube. Um, the primary things that we're gonna look at here is removing the background, um, stretching the words, fish food across the page and how to position something from the front to the back. So let's start with a photo collage feature. So we're going to go ahead and click at the top, create a design on the right side. And we're going to go down to photo collage. So click on photo collage. And I'm going to select the photo collage that has um, room for two pictures. You can do one with three, six, nine, as many photos as you want, or whatever template you want to use is fine. Now, what you'll know here, I'm going to delete a couple of things I don't need. What you'll know here is that the size doesn't look right. And I know that, but that's okay because we're going to resize this. So the first thing we're going to do is change this to bundle because that is what I want my audience to know, my buyer to know is that this is a bundle. I try to keep it a little bit simple because I love looking at all the covers and there's so many great ones that have a lot of writing on them, but I can't read what is in the writing. So I always try to make sure that I can read exactly what it says very clearly, especially if people are um, primarily looking through Teachers Pay Teachers on their phone. So the next thing I need is a cover. Now, let me show you what Surfside Girls cover looks like. So here is the original cover. Um, I can't use this because that, that is copyright infringement. But what I try to do is I look at the cover and I say, okay, what is the object that is symbolic of the cover? And what are the colors that I can include in the cover? So I made one, this is the cover that I made. And this has the author's name on it. I put two surfboards in. All I had to do was look up surf or surfboard and they popped up and then a sign here. Next, I used wood in the background and then I used the font here and curved it using the effects, if you look here for just a moment. Oh, I have to click on the text to do that. So if you go to effects, there is this curve here you can do. Now I don't want that for my bundle, so I'll put this back. Okay, so. That's how simple this was to make. It's not always easy, but once 
you have the like a symbol or something and the colors that fit the book, the novel that you're reading, or if there's a symbol in the book, like if you were to do Lord of the Flies, the conch would be a great symbol. Then it's a lot easier to go from there. So I'm going to go ahead and move. Let's just delete that. I'm going to move, drag and drop this image over here that I created. And I'm going to put it right into the photo collage. Now, I'm using two of the same images. If you want to create two different images, you can, but you don't have to. I actually kind of like the way that it looks with two. Next, I'm going to change the background to a better color. I'm just going to do black. And I'm going to change the letters to orange so that they match. All right. Now, we still have the issue of size. So what we'll do is we'll go to resize. And I use 800 by 900 for my covers. So I'm going to click on 800 by 900. If you need to put it in, it's PX over here. And then it would go 800 by 900. And then you go to the bottom on the left side and click resize. So now we have a slight problem, right? Not a big one just a small one. So we're gonna go ahead and make bundle larger so that it goes all the way across the screen. And then I'm going to take my photos and I'm going to stretch them up and stretch them down. Now you'll notice that when I did that, you're now able to see the title and you're able to see the author. So when you look at this from, let's say, a phone, and someone's scrolling through, they can see, oh, Surfside Girls by Kim Dwinnell, and they can see that it is a bundle. And if they want to read the description or in the description or the title, I can put more information there. Okay, pretty easy enough. Let's go ahead and do our second image for today, we're going to go to create a design. And I'm going to go ahead and do the 800 by 900. I have to manually enter that. So I just usually start with Instagram image. It doesn't matter which one you start with. And I'll go to resize and I'll click on the 800 by 900 PX. And this is really cool. This is one of my favorite features. It's the background remover. Um, but before I do that, I'm gonna put some, something in the back, some things in the background to make it look better. So I'm gonna do, let's say this is some lesson on fish. So I'm gonna put a bunch of bubbles. Let's see. Let's just do copy and paste. I'll do a bunch of bubbles in the background. You can also use this for YouTube um, for your thumbnail. More bubbles here. So I'm trying to give this like an underwater effect. And we'll do one more. Okay. So next, let's go ahead and do fish. I'm going to put a fish in here. So we'll type in fish under elements. And we're going to select, I'm going to go with this fish. This is a pro image, and you cannot use the background remover without pro. And if you don't have pro, you are charged for using pro images. I, I highly suggest that you get the pro um, service. It's really not that much. I don't remember what it is off the top of my head, but I use it and I love it. 
And there's so many additional things that you get with using Pro. So next I'm gonna to go to uploads. If I were to upload a picture of myself, which is what I'm doing here, I would go to this toolbar that says upload media. Next, I would go to device. And then I would choose what image I'm uploading from here. So I already have my image uploaded. I'm gonna scroll down and find it, here it is. Okay, so you'll notice that I'm looking up and this is an image that I use for YouTube. And I was looking up at the title. So from here, I'm gonna go up to effects. And I'm gonna to go to the top here where it says background remover and click on it. And from there, it just takes a few moments for them to remove the background. So there you go. And I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. So now it looks like I'm looking up at the fish. Now, again, as I mentioned, you could use this for YouTube. So you could be looking up at a title or something like that. I have another trick that I wanna show you and that is spreading out the text on the page. So let's start with a text box. I always use a text box, not a text box, but a box for my text. So you can see it clearly. I wouldn't just put it on top of bubbles. So I'm gonna put this up here and I'm gonna change the color to orange. And if you want, you can always use the transparency tool here if you wanna make it a little more transparent. So we'll do that. And then I'll go to text in my left menu here. And I'm just gonna select the first one here since we're just learning. And I'm gonna change this to fish food. Okay, now I'm gonna move fish food up into the box. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so you'll see here, it doesn't go all the way across the page. And that can be very frustrating because you want it to be even, right? So if you look at the toolbar up here, directly above it, there is a, if you hover over, it says spacing. There's lines that go up and down and there's three lines that go vertically. So you're gonna click on spacing. And at the top, it says letter spacing. And you're gonna click on that and move fish food across the page. It didn't go all the way across, so let's do that again. Go a little bit more across. And now we went too far, <laughs> just ever so slightly what just happened here. I think what I'll do is make my box just a tad or a skosh longer. And then I'll put fish food right in there. Okay, um, one more thing that I wanted to show you is how to move something from the front to the back. So let's say that I put the fish first and then I put all the bubbles in and they're on top of the fish and I don't want the bubbles to be on top of the fish. You can go to position and you can send the bubbles to the back. Now we're sending the fish to the back just for presentation purposes. So there you'll see that the fish is behind the bubbles and maybe you want the fish behind the bubbles, I don't know. And now we'll send it to the front. And that puts the bubbles in the back. All right, well, that is it for today. I hope that you got some tips and tricks using Canva. 
It's a great resource to use. It's something I have to have for Teachers Pay Teachers. And um, don't forget to hit subscribe if you're interested in more Teachers Pay Teachers videos. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye.